and welcome to Crumbs and Doilies HQ. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen a picture I put up a few weeks ago of a cake that I made for a friend of mine. And I used a technique which is really hot right now, and that is the fault line technique. This is a really, really much simpler than you think technique, and I can't wait to show you how to do it. So you're gonna need to start with a cake, of course. Um, I have baked just my vanilla sponge, and I've got it four layers high. I've already filled and crumb coated it, and it's been in the fridge for about an hour, so it's nice and cool. And I also have chosen my color scheme. I'm doing a sort of turquoisey blue and pinks um, for my sprinkles inside. So this is really, really easy. I'm gonna start by putting a nice band of buttercream in my blue color, just along the middle of the cake. Now, as you can see, I'm not going right up to the top or down to the bottom because this is just to stick on the sprinkle layer, which is going to be in the middle. Um, and I'm not making it too neat because it just doesn't need to be too neat, frankly. And I'm not going to smooth it out with my cake scraper because I'm about to cover it in sprinkles. So it doesn't really matter if I can see like little lines and dips and stuff. Um, so I think that'll probably do it. Now you might be wondering why on earth my cake is sitting in a Tupperware box. And that's because I'm about to apply some sprinkles and I don't want them pinging all over the place. And also I don't want to waste them if they're not stuck to the cake. So this is a really good way of containing all those bits that don't stick to the cake. And if you want to see a really cool technique on how to cover your entire cake with sprinkles, then check out this week's Tuesday's Tips where Sally shows you how to do that. It's really simple, way simpler than you probably think. Uh, but for this purpose, we're actually only going to put the sprinkles on this band that we've created already. So I've mixed up a variety of sprinkles and you can buy pre-mixed sprinkles online. There's absolutely loads of suppliers now, um, obviously, we have quite a lot to choose from here, so I've just made my own mix. Um, but this one has a bit of everything, like strands, balls, gigantic strands, little square things. Really, really nice mixture of stuff. And I'm gonna start by just grabbing a handful and then just throwing it to my cake. And just keep going round, scooping on your sprinkles until you've covered the whole thing. And Obviously, I'm now picking up from the, <laughs> from the container because my bowl is getting a little bit empty, and that's absolutely fine. Um, if there are like major holes, you can just work on those a little bit more individually, but it's quite fun, this technique, just kind of smushing them on. And I reckon that is pretty well covered. So now, obviously, it's a bit of a mess, so I'm just going to brush all the sprinkles off and just clear up the cake board as well. Okie dokie, and now I'm just going to refrigerate that for just about half an hour just to make sure that's all set and firmly in place. Welcome back. Now my cake has been chilling out in the fridge and that means that all my sprinkles are nicely set onto it, uh, which means they're not going to smush about when I do the next bit, which is to add the upper and lower parts, which are kind of the, the, the bit where the fault is exposing the duly excitingness underneath. So, um, I've got some quite chunky sprinkles here, so I'm gonna need to put quite a thick layer of uh, buttercream because I want it to stand proud, at the top and the bottom, I want it to stand proud of the sprinkly bit so that it really does look like sort of something that's being revealed. So, here we go. I've got my buttercream here, it's nice and smooth. I've got a nice little cranked palette knife. I'm gonna start with the bottom layer and see how I get on, and I'm not going to be neat and tidy, I'm just going to let it kind of dip and, and peak. <laughs> um, uh, you know, just enough to cover the sprinkles. And you'll notice that I'm actually overlapping where the sprinkle line is because I want it to, um, I don't want it to be sort of sprinkle and then buttercream. I want the buttercream to be revealing the sprinkles. So I'm just overlapping it a tiny bit. And I'm, like I said, not being too neat so that it seems quite sort of natural. So once you've gone around the bottom with your thick layer of buttercream, you then need to smooth it out. And by no means do you want to smooth it out and really 
get it super duper neat because you don't want to scrape too much off um, and you don't want to ruin that nice natural line because that's our fault line. Uh, so using a cake scraper, just gently smooth it out. And that, I only went round that once, I did not overdo it, and I think it looks just fine. And as you can see, it's sitting proud of the sprinkles, so it kind of has a little, almost like a shelf. So that bottom part is looking good. I'm now gonna do exactly the same thing, but on the top. And before you start with the smoothing out, it's a good idea to do the top bit. So I'm just gonna put some icing on the top as well because then I can get my corners nice. And now that I've got my top covered, time to smooth. So get your cake scraper back and do exactly the same thing on the sides. And then once you've done those, you can do the top. Now, some people like to keep these, you know, coming up a little bit natural like this and do that as a, as a fault line as well. But I'm actually just going to smooth these and get nice corners. Sorry. And don't forget that when you're smoothing your final smooth, um, make sure you have a bit of kitchen paper or kitchen towel near you so that you can wipe off any sort of muck. Otherwise, you'll end up putting frilly, buttercreamy, dirty bits back onto your cake and you don't want that. And that is almost it, but there's a few more bits to do, so I'm going to put this dude back into the fridge for about half an hour just to set before we finish him off. Ha ha! The end is near, but there is still way loads to do that's going to make this cake look even more awesome than it already does. Like, it looks really cool, right? This is such a cool technique, but there's one extra thing which is good to do, and that is to do a little gold line around the fault line to make it extra super duper special, as if the Earth's crust is bursting open and there's jewels beneath or something. Um, so I'm going to be using um, this edible paint in gold. Uh, you can also use gold luster mixed with a bit of alcohol. Um, it really is better to use alcohol if you can. Um, it does kind of just evaporate and leave just the luster on it, so if you're worried about that. But you can do it with water, but it's just not quite as good, especially when painting on buttercream. Uh, but this stuff's really good, um, edible art paint and I've got a nice clean brush here. I'm just going to start by putting my paint in a little dish and now very carefully I'm going to apply some of this gold paint just along the edge of my fault line. I love it, but I think we can go one step further to improve him, and that is just to finish it off with a few little swirls and a few more sprinkles. Oh, I love it. It's such a cool technique. I love it, and it's so versatile as well. As you saw from my Instagram, it doesn't have to be sprinkles on the inside. You could do what I did, which was to hand paint some little flowers on it. Um, but the same rule applies, and I think it looks so brilliant. I can't wait to see your versions of it. Make sure you put pictures on Instagram and use the hashtag Cupcake Gemma so I can see it. And there's some big news now, massive news. If you are around in London on Sunday the 4th of August, then good news for you, I'm gonna be doing a meet and greet at the Crumbs and Doily shop in Soho. That's one Kingly Court, so please come along. I'll be there from 12 until three or four, depending <laughs> on how lucky you are. Um, and I'd love to meet you, so do come along. Um, so I'll be there and I will be back with another recipe next week, so I'll see you then, bye.